we're back from all of our adventures, whatever they may be, over this month and some change. You broke the protocol. What am I supposed to say? Isn't the protocol like, hey, Vanessa, what's the adventure today? Today, we are giving you an update. An update, a life update. Yes. So what's gone on in life since our last update? Well, I've slept. Hang on, folks, you are not going to believe this. A bunch of other News stuff. alert, breaking <laughs> alert. <laughs> We've slept. <laughs> That's good. If we hadn't slept, we would we would then be in bad shape, I'm sure. Yep. Uh, so I think it's been a, over a month, a month and change, something like that. I know probably one of the first things on my list was we went kayaking again over Labor Day. Yeah, and if you haven't checked that out, check it out over there. There's a whole video for that. That's whole right. video for that. Yeah, it was pretty great. It's a pretty epic video. It's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. We're not tandem kayaking either, right now. We're not tandem kayaking either. We're not tandem kayaking. Never say never. Never say never. That's a, that's a good life motto. We attended a marriage getaway with Johnny and friends. Uh, and Johnny is spelled J-O-N-I, uh, but it's a she. If you are not familiar with Johnny, she toured with, not Ben Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> she's not. She's not that old. I, I don't think I she's Franklin that old. I have in my head, not Franklin Graham, but it's uh, Billy, Billy Graham. Graham. Billy Graham. And <laughs> also maybe some connection to the Gaithers a little bit. Yeah. Uh, or Gettys. Or yeah, she's got a lot of good connections she does that with way. The so. now. Johnny started a nonprofit after she had a diving accident, which left her a quadriplegic. In between there, she got kind of famous or known for painting. She liked art before she was injured and then through occupational therapy, learn to paint with a paintbrush or a pencil drawing in her mouth uh, and has some incredible artwork. Um, but she is also a Christian and believer. And of course, going through the process of an accident like that was a faith shaping kind of life event. She eventually started the nonprofit Johnny and Friends. And they do a handful of things. The, the big one that I was familiar with well before my accident was getting wheelchairs to people who need them in the rest of the two thirds world. So that's a pretty cool part of her ministry, but they also do these retreats in the States. So marriage retreats, family retreats, warrior retreats. It's really, it was really refreshing. We went to kind of the beta, beta launch, maybe, back from yeah. Arizona. The first time they've done it in a while, at least. Mm -hmm. For a and marriage retreat. They've done family retreats, Which but are not huge. The marriage retreat was small. Mm -hmm. And it was really nice, quite intimate, very small, yeah. uh, up in Scottsdale. So not too far from where we're at, but it was nice to even get away for the, the little bit we got to get away. Yeah. And get to meet people. So yeah. ran into some people that are connected to a church in town and also have some friends uh, taking some classes through Gateway Seminary with the pastor and also one of the other pastors, one of the associate pastors. And so, yeah, we're kind of hanging out. Hanging out with that church? Yeah, and, we've been attending yeah. attending with them regularly for worship and uh, on and off to a, to a small group that we got invited to with some people that we met at the Johnny and Friends retreat. So that was kind of special. You know, we, I think we, we tend to say that that's probably not a coincidence. So yeah. it, it's been refreshing to settle in a little bit, at least in this temporary place that we're in. It is nice to know that there are others that are thinking about disabilities. And I know that the people we met uh, do another branch or another thing that Johnny and Friends does, which is go out and consult with churches on how to start disabled ministries, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. So we get to have some really fun theological conversations. And regardless of all that, we got to connect a lot uh, as a married couple and talk about disabilities. One of the takeaways for me for the marriage retreat was the keynote speakers. Mm -hmm. And a couple of the keynote speakers were interabled couples. So one of the couples was a full-time wheelchair user, had a disability. And the first keynote speaker, it was just real refreshing to hear how they learned to adapt life to their circumstance. And she has to do what, what's known as a quad cough and have help or assistance to cough. And there was times when she needed to cough and he was able to leave work to help her cough and then go back to work. Uh, and that was just kind of interesting to hear and, and learn how they adapt their life. Because after an accident like, like we've gone through, like they've gone through, mm -hmm life doesn't look the same. Roles change. And the most loving thing that, that you get to do is love your spouse as Christ loved the church. 
And it was cool hearing the stories of people that have successfully made that change. And I think a bit sobering to hear the statistics because we heard it a couple times. Yeah. 85% of married couples that go through a tragedy like this end up in divorce. Yeah. Um, And that's a sobering statistic. I'm thankful to have Jeff through all of this, uh, you know, no questions uh, of leaving or divorce or anything like that. He's fought for me and thanks to many gifts, been able to be with me through all of my hospitalization and so on and so forth. As much as being injured was a terrible thing, I feel like everything has gone right, so to speak, as far as healing and therapy and Jeff and being able to move to Phoenix for now and all of these pieces just have come together in a way we couldn't have expected. And we definitely give God the praise for that. And yeah. So many people to thank and, and so many of you that are watching on the update that we, we could not have paid the bills, kept things going without your support and help. Mm-hmm. So thank you. Thank you. Another one of the big happenings this month was the Abilities Expo. We got to go Sunday afternoon and tour all of the booths and people and stuff. Yeah, so what was your favorite booth at the Abilities Expo? Oh my, uh, what was my favorite booth? Think, think. It has to be Spinergy because they have cool, shiny wheels. All the cool kids have Spinergy wheels, and so for a long time I've been like, I want Spinergy wheels. And there is a very legitimate reasoning, too, because they are very much lighter than the existing wheels on my wheelchair. So that's, that's definitely one of my... One of my many reasons, besides just that all the cool kids have Spinergy wheels. They're they're designed really well. They have like fibers instead of metal spokes, so they don't break as easy. They don't, tensioning is a whole different thing. Lower profile too to help get you through doors, (laughs) aside from just being shiny, uh, which is a cool thing too. I I know that's cool. But the, the weight, I think the weight was drastic. I forget how heavy your wheels are. They're pretty heavy. They're pretty heavy. And the Spinergy wheels are a fraction. They're like the weight of a paperback book. The weight of a paperback book. And it just is mind blowing. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one of the things. The Spinergy booth was insane because they had different kinds of wheels, including some hiking wheels that maybe down the road we can dream about. There was also different outdoor bikes. And really, the biggest thing I liked about it is just the amount of people we knew. (laughs) It's kind of nice to go somewhere in Phoenix and you know people. Yeah, because we'd met people from the Arizona Spinal Cord Injury Association, from Ability360, from High Country Adaptive Sports, from the, the water one, the, I always forget the water one's name. Adaptive Water Sports. Something like Arizona that. Arizona Adaptive Water Sports. Yeah, I think it's that. Oh, my wheelchair tech was there. Yeah. So. Lots of people. And yeah. it's just really neat to be able to network and connect and talk and. Yeah. Yeah, share. Share a little bit in life. I feel like. The past month has been the conference month. And there's even more conferences this month, but that's more for my work. We had the Arizona Spinal Association held their own conference called the Push Forward Conference, which is super clever, super clever name. And I think of all of them, that one was probably one of the first where I'm like, I really feel like I'm involved in the disability community now. Like the expo was nice, but it was in a big, you know, expo hall, this big gym thing. And it, they're just overwhelming to me. Like there's all these people and they're all trying to sell you something. The Arizona Spinal Cord Injury Association Conference was a lot more intimate. I mean, there's still people selling stuff, but it was all really specific as well, where Abilities Expo has all kinds of things for all kinds of disabilities. Uh, You know, every kind of wheelchair imaginable, a lot of power wheelchairs, a lot of of different stuff, Uh, stuff for blind folks, stuff for deaf folks. Um, And so the Spinal Cord Injury Association obviously is for spinal cord injuries so much more tailored and specific to what exactly our community is dealing with. Yeah, and one of the cool partnerships, the hopeful partnerships that we left with, I left with, I know last video, last update video, I talked about figuring out how to make a laser pedal. I feel like I got a little bit stalled, but I met somebody that works specifically with adaptive tech. Really, they do a lot with like gaming and quadriplegics, getting them gaming again. But we were talking switches and he was geeking out and I was 
So I think we're setting up a time where we can possibly bring a piano there and have a couple people help us troubleshoot it. Yeah. And we'll see what we come up with. Uh, in the meantime, though, we got to get something working because being part of the disability community. I am going to play at the Tucson Disability Pride event uh, as a performer on December 3rd. So something I wasn't really expecting, but there was a post on Facebook that said, hey, we're looking for people. And I filled it out and they said, yeah, we would love to have you come play. That's going to be a lot of fun. So December 3rd, I know that's a Sunday. So a lot of people, probably even if you're in Arizona, might not be able to make it out. But uh, if you can and you're willing to, it's at 12:20. So I get a 20-minute set. 20-minute set. Uh, if you go to a church with two services, you can go to the early service and then head out to Tucson and enjoy an afternoon in Tucson. Yeah, there you yeah, go. There we go. No, but uh, it'll be fun. A, a couple songs set, doing some originals maybe. I don't know. But the mm -hmm. big deal is we're gonna figure out pedals. So yeah. this partnership with the group, and they, I think they partner with Northern Arizona University, okay. NAU, yeah. uh, which is cool. And that, that's hopeful. But I think one of the faster ones is just mechanical leverage. So I know me and you kind of used uh, masking tape. And this is we not the final product. couldn't find any duct tape in the house, so. I, yeah, we're out, of, we're out <laughs> of duct tape. I don't know what, what our problem the is. The horror. The horror. Duct tape! Oh, woo! So we used some masking tape, and I mocked up a very rough concept of a pedal and I think it's going to work so hopefully maybe even by the end of this week I can get a prototype a hard harder fixed prototype up and running that... with duct tape instead of masking tape no not with duct tape <laughs> actually like epoxied and screwed and glued you know a functioning extension extension of a pedal but it, yeah. it'll be kind of exciting to see what we can do with uh, mechanical leverage and just some basic DIY craftsmanship because I know the uh, rough prototypes seem to have some pretty pretty good potential as far as yeah. some of the issues we were having. But yeah. yeah, I'd tried kind of a lot of stuff before. The you know I'd put the pedal behind my back and my backrest, but I like to sit toward the front of my wheelchair when I'm playing because you know singing I'm kind of crunched up in my wheelchair and just feel more present if I can scoot forward. So I can't put it behind the back and putting it behind the sides wouldn't work and it'd fall off and yeah. So finding something solid. It will be wonderful. And we've got a deadline, so let's get it done before the deadline. That'll we'll be good. do it. Physical therapy. I've been busy going and lots and lots of stretching. Jeff's been helping me with assisted stretches uh, most every day. And I've been working to get in my standing frame more and more often. They have me do this bicycle, uh, but it, it pedals for me. So I don't actually pedal, but it stretches out my hips and it feels real good. And they even tried this uh, vibrating foot plate. Um, you know, like the vibrating foot plate Barnabas. So they put my feet on there and it vibrates real fast to reduce my spasticity and tightness in my legs. Because even though my legs don't work normally, the muscles in them will sometimes just have tone. They will activate and they will just get very tight. And that's a detriment for the getting me in the leg braces that I'm going to be getting into to be able to keep my legs straightened out and different things like that. So. Stretching has been a huge, huge part of physical therapy. Lots of push-ups. The thing I right. enjoyed this past month was the water therapy. Yes. So getting an aqua therapy thing in, now that it's uh, cooling off in Phoenix, we're <laughs> below 100 some. Makes the pool more enjoyable. <laughs> yeah, the pool's not like lukewarm uh, bathtub water. And I know you've been really working hard on continuing to do shoulder things at yes. home, even with free weights and bands that you've been learning in therapy, so that's great. Other big thing you've been doing in therapy is floor to chair transfers and getting really yes. close to mastering those, so that's really cool. Good, it doesn't feel close, but I'm glad it, it looks close. It's a lot easier. Vanessa was a little <laughs> cocky the other day and slid out of her chair and- It was, it was well, controlled. well controlled. I, I knew that, I'm like, I might slid out of my chair now. I might not, it's like I Buzz, did. Like Buzz Lightyear. That wasn't flying, that was falling with style. So, um, Vanessa fell with style. And hey Jeff, he's like, I'll be there in a minute, okay. I didn't realize she'd fallen out of her chair and I, I got there and I was like, you fell? And she's like, I'm fine. And so I was helping her up and I hardly did any work. Like I did a little bit of work to help assist and guide, but 
It wasn't like some of the earlier times like, where... just pick me up. Yep, where it's like a straight, I'm just picking you up and putting you in your chair. So that's cool. And it's really good for me to know how I can tell Jeff how to help me. Because yep. I could tell somebody else how to help me if it happens somewhere else. I'm like, hey, yeah, I need you to, you know, push up behind my rear. It's okay, you'll touch my butt. You're just helping me back in my chair. Well, and knowing not to use a lot of force because the amount of force you're starting to use, if they use too much, you will literally be... <laughs> I was like, oh, flying across the end up on my head. <laughs> uh, no. I can't believe Vanessa did this. This is, you know, we've been doing these adventures together for a while now. Yeah. And I had been working a lot, officiating, making a little bit of extra money for us. Yeah. Uh, doing as much as I can. And... Come on, Rob. Go it, go it both ways. So I was officiating all day on a day where there was a adventure that night. Mm-hmm. And lo and behold... I'm leaving to go officiate, and Vanessa's like, well, I think I want to make this bike ride. I'm going to get an, an Uber and get there. Yep. So tell us a little bit about your Uber experience. Oh, this might be a little bit of whiny Vanessa, though. There was an individual who came to pick me up in the Uber and got out of their, their car and, and said, well, well you, you have to pick the, the other kind of Uber because there's like an Uber assist you can pick. Uh, and I just picked a regular Uber, and I'm like, oh well, that, that's okay. I, you, you know, I can I can go get a different Uber if you want. And I read all the fine print, and real really, I can get in the Uber on my own. And the folding chair, it says in Uber's fine print that, you know, if your chair comes apart, you can take any regular Uber. Uh, and Uber Assist is a little more like. It's a little unclear of like what I'm supposed to do. Anyway, so I've taken Ubers before and nobody's given me any problems with it, but she seemed to be pretty negative about the wheelchair and the fact that, well, I'm really not supposed to take a regular Uber. That was, that was no fun. So she ended up canceling the ride. A new Uber came within like five minutes who had no problems with watching me transfer myself right into the Uber all by myself. They did graciously help me tear apart the chair, which is nice. Yeah, I don't really need assistance to get in. I can do that on my own now. And not only that, you rode all the way to the other side of town yep. to Ability360, and then you you rode a bike in what they called Papa Glow. Talk us through your experience a little bit. There's a park called Papa Go Park, uh, and there's a road named after it, and I'm sure there's history that I should go learn about Papa Go. So they called it Papa Glow because we decorated the bikes with glow sticks, and I wore some goofy glow-in-the-dark glasses, except I think I stuck them in my helmet for the actual bike ride. We decorated all the bikes up and then rode over 10 miles down this, you know, the canal and by Tempe Town Lake. All these places that I haven't even been in the daylight, which I will say this time of year, they were much more enjoyable to be at when the sun was down. I wouldn't have wanted to deal with the sun for that bike ride this time of year. So it was super nice to be out and zooming around and seeing the lights of the town. Uh, there was a drone show that we, we kind of stumbled across and there was a big concert going on on the other side of the lake that we could hear some of. It was, it was, a, it was a great ride. And I'm super jealous, but I was really glad I got to pick you up yeah, from it. Like, because Jeff, can you come pick me up? Your event actually lasted longer than officiating plus me commuting back to back to the area so yeah it's kind of fun to get to stop in and then help put some bikes away and yeah and come home chat with some other people that we'd met before too yeah. that kind of that feeling like we're really making connections in the in the disability community which is which is nice and part of why we wanted to be here too and it is just real really really cool to see you take on such a i don't know i don't know how many people would be willing to do that i feel like that's pretty gutsy and it's cool to see you have a little bit of courage to get out and go do something fun and yeah. one of my other adventures that i've been doing is singing in a choir one of jeff's classmates who i audited a class with last year we, when we hiked the grand canyon her daughter is singing in the arizona girl choir and they happen to also have an adult choir i'm like well that'd be that'd be kind of a fun outlet you know, get me out of the house and something where I'm singing. Because I, of course, being involved in music is something I can't get away from. Been singing with them and they had a concert as well one of those days that Jeff was working. So another, I think I tried Lyft that day actually. 
uh, they have a little bit clearer instructions for wheelchair users. So I took a lift there and back without any weird people saying I needed a different level. And yeah, it's been enjoyable. Yeah, you got a couple concerts coming up. If I can figure out if there's any press or anything or dates, I'll put them yeah. on the screen. I think so. they're still working on nailing down their dates. They might be so. working on it, so it might not be on the screen. But check out the social meds. Yeah. Facebook, Tiny Letter, yeah. all the other ways that we're communicating. I'm sure Vanessa will get some word out on the Arizona Girls Choir. Mm -hmm. And they've got an adult level plus lots of different levels. So like entry, children's choir on up. They're very cute. So, yeah. It should be a wonderful concert or series of concerts. There's yes. more than one coming up. So that should be really fun to go to. So we went from a bio assist, which some of y'all have definitely seen the video <laughs> of walking the dogs. Walking the dog. And now she's got an actual e-assist, which dun, 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 dun. the smart drive is called the smart drive. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. The thing I'm looking forward to using it on the most is hotel carpet. Uh, we went to that marriage retreat and I'm like, I'm like, oh, hotel carpet. Just going down the hallway to our room over hotel carpet. Uh, that's been one of the only times I've been like, Jeff, will you please push me? <laughs> this is one of the only times my wife has actually asked for an assist. So <laughs> e-assist will be nice for that, yeah. uh, for sure. The other thing it's going to be nice for is the ease of transporting liquids, even within our house. So <laughs> Vanessa has been quite skilled at transporting liquids via one hand push, switch, one hand push, switch, switching her mug. <laughs> and now she can, with ease, get a, a cup of coffee or water and travel to where she needs to go. So we're very blessed that ESS came in and all the training was super easy and smooth. Vanessa, what's our vocabulary word of the day? Word or acronym? Yes, <laughs> acronym. Today's acronym is KFO and or RGO. KFO stands for knee, ankle, foot orthotic and RGO stands for reciprocating gait orthotic. And that still is clear as mud. Knee, ankle, foot. That one's a little more obvious. Involves your knee, your ankle, and your foot. And so those braces will uh, strap on my thigh and here and then lock out my leg so that it's straight. Um, so those will go on both legs. And then that attaches to the reciprocating gait part. So there'll be something around my abdomen that connects to that that will also lock out once my hips straighten all out as well when I'm in a standing position. And the reciprocating part comes in where that locks when I move my legs forward, it reciprocates and helps move my legs forward in a walking motion. Yeah, it's, it's adaptive walking. Yes. Lots of reasons to want to do this. One of them is making cooking easier. I can see in the pan. It's better to cook when you can see in the pan and it's not above your head. <laughs> but other things is you, you might, there are patients that are able to do the reciprocating orthotic and walk for distances and they really enjoy doing that. Mm -hmm. Might be a thing that you like, it might not. And it might be more of a thing where you're able to lock your knees out and stand and sing yeah. on occasions, which would be pretty sweet. That one I'm really looking forward to with the singing I've been doing in the choir. Yeah, so a lot of the photos you saw was from our second appointment with our orthodist. They're almost there. You, you coming see, they're soon. coming soon. So they're making some tweaks on it and adding some new parts and making yeah. sure they fit my feet. Making for sure they fit exactly. That was the main part of the appointment. We were robbed again in Williams this time. Ah, oh, said kick them up, hand it over, ah. and nobody gets hurt. Ah, the hell, girl. Yes, look at that. <laughs> Just kidding. There's some videos coming up that should be a lot of fun. Thank you, Mom, for helping us be able to celebrate a 10 year anniversary in a spectacular way. We weren't really probably gonna be able to do much of anything. We were talking about doing some things, but not to the level of that. So like, we're very blessed for your, your help with that. Yeah. And we've got a series of three videos that are coming out to talk about that trip where we go to the Grand Canyon, but we do it via the railway. Yeah. And so you're gonna have to stick around to see the rest of some of those videos. But an update on our robbery, cause we were actually robbed. Um, back in July. Back in July. And we got some insurance money to pay out and mm -hmm. it doesn't cover everything, but I'm, we've been blessed. My uncle's been amazing. Thank you, Uncle Lynn. Helped buy me some extra tools, which is awesome. I can't wait to 
go visit Lubbock and bring some tools back. That'll be great. And I also had uh, the Woods helped out, gave some donations that helped me get some tools that immediately went to help fix a project for us at the house. So that was a huge blessing. Thank you for your donation. And we're excited to get some music gear in so yes. we can start making music again because music uh, has been something we've always done. And it's been a little, a little sad around here <laughs> a little bit. We haven't done as much music as we, we normally do. So We did get new neighbors upstairs, so... Yeah, we're going to have to make them really dislike us. Is that... No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, one of the things we continuously get asked for is prayer requests. Yeah. What, what, what can people pray for us about? And there are a couple things that you can pray for us. I know a lot we're not going to be able to talk a lot about, but just keep us in prayer for next steps. I know that we are really desiring to understand where God's leading and what that looks like and how... What are the battles and yeah. things in front of us? We we don't know. I know. Part of last month, I got real anxious about, okay, where are we going to live in January? Yeah. Like, our lease ends in the middle of January. So are we going to stay here? Will we be in Phoenix? Should we move? Should we... Where, where... You know, just all of the timing and progression of that. So at this point, um, we are planning on staying in Phoenix... Uh, at least through kind of the spring semester, that's the what seems wise given the progression of my appointments and healthcare and therapy and things like that. So there's a little bit of an answer there, but long term, it, 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 there's a lot of uncertainty. Yeah, and we're fixing to come up on a series of appointments or an appointment where we have to come up with everything that could possibly happen for the duration of Vanessa's injury and just pray for wisdom and guidance yeah. through that process because I know it's easy to forget stuff and it'll be challenging if, yeah. if, if we forget stuff. So. Between doc, you know, we'll have a lot of help from physical therapy and from uh, my rehab doctor. Uh, and I'm super thankful for, for both of those folks who have been so helpful in lots of different areas. Thank you all for, again, your support and your love and your care for us. We hope to get to see more and more of you again as we can and uh, we just want to say thank you from the, the bottom of our heart. Thank you. Thank you. On to adventure. On to adventure. <laughs>